You alone can do it, but you can't do it alone. Now, I've never tried this because they won't let you do this in terms of research because of cruel and unusual punishment or some weird thing like that. You've got to get your research approved. But what I wanted to do was take one of you and lock you in a padded room with all the best books on interpersonal relationships that we could possibly find, and we wouldn't let you out of the room until you had read them all. And then we would figure that once you absorbed all that knowledge, we brought you back into the world, you would be a superhuman communicator, superhuman relator, and I'm confident that you would fail. Because the only way you learn how to do this communication stuff is you have the courage to keep trying to do something different in the relationships that come into your life every day. We all have a million opportunities every day. You know, how many times do you interact with people? Even the Walmart checkout person or, I mean, you know, think about it. And there's something that I learned when I used to do wilderness hiking. And when, wilderness hiking is where after the first day in, you're not going to see anybody for the next 10 days or however long you're in there because you're so far back in the woods. There's not that many places in this country where you can do that, but there, there's still quite a few in the Rockies, in the, in the Smokies, and, and so forth. The wilderness hiking model says that you are required to leave every campsite better than what you found it. So it's amazing. You, it, you know, the sun's setting, it's getting cold, and you're saying, oh, geez, we're not to the campsite yet, and then we still got to set up a fire, and we got to set up our tent. And you walk in, and there's the fire all set up and waiting for you in, in the pit. And maybe they even had a big bucket of water that's fresh water there for you. And I mean, you know, now no matter how good those people left the campsite before you got there, you got to leave it better. That's what the motto is about. Isn't that a great motto? Now, I want to give that to you in the context of human relationships. What if you challenged yourself every day that you were going to leave every human interaction where the other person's in a better place than before they interacted with you? What would you do? See, now, what would be one or two little things you would do different? You would just say to yourself, you know, today I'm going to give myself this assignment, right? I'm going to try it out. So what are the ways you make people feel better? Well, you make them feel understood. That would work. Uh, you notice what's right with them. Understand, you know, give them an affirmation, give them an appreciation. That usually makes people feel better than before they talk to you, right? Give a little encouragement or just listen because somebody's upset about something. I mean, there's a million little things you could do that would leave the relationship better than what you found it, but you would have to be on top of your game because the truth of the matter is usually we're so wrapped up in what our needs are that we're truly not paying very much attention to what's going on with anybody else. Well, the way it works in relationship, I'm on your handout now, and this is why relationships are so powerful. The more I let you know me, the more you let me know you. The more I know you, the more I know myself. Have you noticed, if you think in your life about who's the best friend you ever had or still have, I'm thinking at some time in that relationship, it's possible that one of you took a risk and you shared something deeply personal with the other person, not knowing for sure whether they would judge you about it or not want to hear it or whatever, but if the other person fully received it and made you feel understood at that time, what happened to this relationship? You just took it to a new level, didn't you? And the big thing is, because you took the risk to be open and honest about something, you just gave them permission to do the same thing back. And so one person takes that risk, and then the other has permission, and then you go a little deeper, and you go a little deeper, and pretty soon some of you are lucky enough to say that you have somebody in your life that you feel you could absolutely talk to them about anything. And, and if you have such a person, you're a lucky person, but know that somehow or another you created that by taking those risks. We need each other to become all that we can be. Now, there's another interesting thing that comes from the work of Harville Hendricks, who's uh, probably the foremost uh, trainer of marriage counselors in the United States. <coughs> but what he has figured out, and I think that there's some truth to this, whatever is most difficult for you to give in a relationship is the very thing that might make you more whole if you had the courage to try to give it. So, for example, is it hard for you to express appreciation, affirmation, caring, love. You just have a hard time saying things like that. Well, you know, if you could get better at that, it would make you more whole. Do you have hard, a hard time talking about your hurt and your fear? 
with anybody. You just keep it inside. Well, you know, if you could learn how to do that, it would make you more whole. You see where I'm going with this? If you could learn how to give the other person the thing that's hard for you to give them, it makes you more whole. So there's another challenge for you. You alone can do it, but you can't do it alone. Your relationship with yourself is a mirror image of your relationship with other people. When you become more loving of yourself, then you learn how to be more loving of others and vice versa. So there's a very simple quote here that I'll share with you that comes from the handbook of higher consciousness. That's Ken Keyes. A loving person lives in a loving world. A hostile person lives in a hostile world. And everybody you meet is your mirror. So what do you see in other people? Right? This is the projection thing we talked about too. 